Russians who fled border areas in panic after the Ukrainian armed forces broke through say they were forced to abandon their homes and flee as local government control collapsed. Panic quickly spread through villages in the Kursk region of southern Russia as the Ukrainian armed forces staged the first foreign incursion into Russian territory since World War II. The British publication The Telegraph writes about this. We don't understand why they don't tell the truth. One woman told the Russian newspaper Kommersant. On TV, they kept saying, this is an emergency. What emergency situation is there when there are foreign tanks on our soil? This is already a war. Russians are outraged. On Sunday, Ukrainian forces released videos showing them tearing down Russian flags from government buildings in villages around the small town of Sudza, 75 miles southwest of Kursk. Other videos showed dozens of bodies of dead Russian soldiers scattered across fields or lying on the edges of forests. The head of the Belovsky district, which borders Sudza Nikolai Volobuyev, also admitted that Ukrainian soldiers had already advanced into his region and gave the order for evacuation. The situation is stable, but very tense. Today we do not understand all the problems in the border areas, he said. A Ukrainian security official told AFP that thousands of troops were involved in the attack, which saw about 600 square kilometers of Russian territory seized. In scenes similar to those seen across Ukraine after Russia's full-scale invasion in February 2022, tens of thousands of people were now fleeing the advance, pouring into Kursk in cars, on bicycles and squeezing into ambulances, clutching a few bags of hastily gathered belongings. Russian media reported that 20 evacuation centers had been set up for people fleeing the border region, but they quickly became overcrowded. Foreign soldiers armed with NATO equipment entered our land and within hours our city was reduced to rubble, their spokesman said, ignoring a woman sobbing nearby. We lost our land, our homes. We fled under fire, mostly without papers. Another man accused the Russian military of failing to protect the country. He said the evacuation had been chaotic, with people forced to flee in their underwear and t-shirts and children wrapped in rags. In one cut-off village, people had to swim across the river as best they could, he said. Despite the Kremlin's orders to its propaganda arm to downplay the scale of the Ukrainian attack, the shock and bewilderment of the people has filtered through to the usually accommodating Russian media. Russian leader Vladimir Putin has convened a meeting regarding the situation in the regions bordering Ukraine and demanded that Russia's defense ministry push the enemy out of Kursk Oblast. The defense ministry is definitely facing the main task of pushing the enemy out of our territories and, in coordination with the border service, ensure robust protection of the state border, he said. Putin also claimed that Ukraine seems to be trying to improve its future negotiating position. It is now clear why the Kiev regime refused our proposals to return to the plan for peaceful settlement, Putin said. The enemy, with the help of its Western masters, it is doing their bidding, and the West is waging war against us using Ukrainians, seeks to improve its negotiating position in the future. But what kind of negotiations can we even talk about with people who indiscriminately strike civilians, civilian infrastructure or try to create threats to nuclear power facilities, the president went on to say. What can we even talk about with them? He said that Russian armed forces are advancing along the entire line of combat engagement in the special operation zone. The pace of advancement of the Russian armed forces along the entire front has increased by 1.5 times. Kiev tried to destroy the cohesion of Russian society, but it failed, the number of those wishing to sign a contract with the Russian armed forces has increased, he said. The situation in the Kursk region is complicated, 28 settlements are under the control of Ukraine, Alexei Smirnov, acting governor of the Kursk region, said in a meeting with Putin. The fate of nearly 2,000 people from the province is unknown, he added. He added that Ukrainian forces had advanced 12 kilometers into Russian territory in an incursion that began on August 6. There is no clear front line in the Kursk region, which makes it difficult to determine the enemy's location, he said. 
Alexei Smirnov told that an anti-tank ditch has already been dug in the Kursk region for 40 kilometers. According to him, sabotage groups with Russian documents are operating in the Kursk region. На сегодняшний день под контролем противника находится 28 населенных пунктов. Глубина проникновения на территорию Курской области составляет 12 километров. Ширина по фронту 40 километров. Ну, это, это, послушайте, Алексей Борисович, это военное ведомство вам доложит, какая там ширина и глубина. Вы расскажите нам про социально-экономическую ситуацию и о помощи людям доложите.